So this is the uh, state of the car as it is now. Frame is finished from the nose back to the front roll hoop. It's all welded up to there, and then the tubes are just stuck in place right back to the main roll hoop, or at least the, the, the four outside frame members. Those I just finished fitting today. That was a lot of work to get the roll hook to fit properly. So it has to be correct in three dimensions at four different places. So to give you just a quick overview of the nose, this is where the, uh, uh, the springs and shocks, the front will mount between these two members here. The rocker arms will mount up in here, front rockers. The uh, brake, uh, brake uh, master cylinders will be in this area here. There will be uh, an adjustable <clears throat> piece that goes from here to here with the brakes, brake pedal cluster moving back and forth as an assembly right there. Down here is the front keel. It's a keel type design like a Formula One car from maybe, uh, I don't know, eight or ten years ago. Um, what this does, if you look up from the front, is it gets the bottom of the car out of the way of the front spoiler so that the air flow can flow with the front spoiler really smoothly and you get maximum downforce. Because the front spoiler operates in ground effect, it's very, very effective. You get, I don't know, several times the amount of downforce you'd expect from it. So it's really important to keep it operating well. Then the whole rest of the car is designed to try to generate enough downforce at the back end to equal the, uh, the front end. Down here on the keel, the front A-arms mount all the way at the center there and there. They pretty much meet at the center of the car, almost like a F1 flex here, except I'm going to have a couple of rod ends there on each side. And then they, they come out this way to here, move up and down like that. Driver's legs go, go right through here. Let's see, driver's, uh, driver's seat's right around in here. Driver's back will be right up around here. Seat belts, seat belts attached right here, over the driver's shoulders. Head comes up here. Proper clearance from the head, top of the helmet to the top of the roll bar per SCCA rules. So I'm uh, fitting, tool, uh, fitting the, the tubes. If you go on my website, uh, ludemanengineering.com, you can see the, uh, a tutorial for how to fit tubes using SolidWorks. These are pieces of paper. Actually, I'll show you over here. Over on the workbench, we have several uh, sheets of paper that are printed out. This is what I get out of SolidWorks. You can see it shows the end profiles for one tube. I cut the printers out full size, cut them out, tape them onto, uh, onto a, a tube, or not tape them, but uh, stick them on the tube because I print them on sticker paper. And then I can cut very precisely, very precisely around each of those ends, get the exact tube profile I need. It's almost as good as laser cutting, but uh, I can do it all at home without a laser cutting service bureau, which I don't even know if they're available in Thailand, where I am. And uh, on these, I've already polished the labels off, but you can see how well they fit just on the first fitting there. It's almost like laser cutting. I like it because the, as I've gotten some experience using the angle grinder, it's my angle grinding station, uh, I can actually grind these things really fast. So get yourself one of these really nice um, clamps here. 
and you just take you take the piece put it in there, clamp it shut. All right, now my angle grinder is on the other side of the room, but I take the uh, angle grinder over there, and it takes me probably less than five minutes to grind one of these tubes at this point. And the great thing is that it's the exact correct length and shape, so I know when I go to fit them, if they don't fit together perfectly, something's wrong, and I can try to figure out what the problem is.